five times five is? 25. Yeah. Hey folks, welcome, 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 and welcome out there. On Thursday afternoon, you are watching Math Line. I'm Ernie Roberts. I'm your host for this afternoon's session. We are grateful and glad that you've tuned in this afternoon. We also, you know, you know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to say, right? We want you to call in. All right, that number, 844-686-2378. And we've got some folks who are pretty consistent about calling now. Now I'm going to hear from Sammy again today. At least he told me he was going to call again. So we're going to be waiting for him. And also, we're going to wait for you guys. Make the show rock today. Our phone operators, once again, the Beard and High Key Club has sponsored and my goodness, Jesse and Emily, they came back two days in a row. Yay! Thank you, guys. Great job on your part. Glad you're here. And they need to be, you know, hearing from you guys out there in the, in the TV viewing land, okay? So give us those calls, 844-686-2378. What do you do when you call here? We'll get a problem going, all right? We'll solve it live on the air, hopefully, together. And if not, we'll figure it out and have it for you the next time, all right? But again, that number, 844-686-2378. We do want to hear from you this afternoon. And to get us started off in a good foot, let's see what the problem of the day has brought us today. It says, solve for x in the equation, 4 times 2x minus 3, and it's in a parenthesis, folks. There we go. That's important. Equals to 2 times that 3 times the x plus 5. Also, that 3x plus 5 is also in a parenthesis, which means distributive property is going to go rampant today. Okay. And then we check our solution as always. We love to check that solution and make sure it works. So let us see where this is going to take us. Let's take a look at the paper coming up here. Here we go. Again, the variable x. And also, I like what the uh, instructions on the on our plate there before, our slate that we had right up there beforehand said, we're going to check. We're also going to check after this one's done, too. Now, let's work through the parentheses because I said, I gave you a hint, right, about the distributive property. So let's play that out. So we're going to take this 4, and sometimes if you're occasionally in my algebra classes, you stop there and you, you get, oh, no. Not a good answer, right. So we want to continue doing that four all the way through the parentheses. Actually, the majority of my students know to get to that ending there. They work at it and they work very hard for it. Now, the same story is going on over here. We're going to take the two and we're going to run it through the three and the five. All right, so we want to make sure we're doubling everything on the right. We are quadrupling. We're going to four times everything that's on the left. All right, so let's see where it's going to take us. What's going to happen here? Taking 4 times the 2x, I'm going to have 8x working for me right there. I'm going to take my 4 times that minus 3. Now, that's just like saying a positive times a negative, pretty much. You're going to keep the minus sign going, and it's going to give us a 12. So, again, watch your signs. That's a very important thing. Oh, you say, Ernie, you didn't throw any negatives at us in front of the 4s or the 2s, so we don't have to worry about changing signs, but we need to make sure we keep those signs as they go through. Now, doubling over here, how about it? We've got 6x. And I think 2 times 5, last time I checked, is still 10. So we're going to double and get 10. Now, life is good, is it not? Life is wonderful always, isn't it? When you're watching MathLine, what better things could happen to you today? So let us get the X's together, and let's get the... Ooh, that 12 needs to go over there. Let's talk about that one thing at a time, all right? At this point, we, we, whatever we do, we do not add X, X's together yet, all right? We do not say 8X plus 6X gives us 14X. It'll be a nightmare, okay? Don't do that. So what we need to do is instead subtract that 6x from the right because we really want to get it to the left side, all right? So it shifts over by subtracting, and we must do the identical same thing. My friends, we call that the subtraction property of equality. Nice formal name. We're basically say whatever you do to the right, you got to do it to the left in terms of the sides, correct? But anyway, we've got 2x minus 12. The minus 12 still hangs on. Don't forget the sign is... There's a, there's a minus still there. Don't lose that. Now, say goodbye to the six X's over here. That's why we did that. Keep the 10. Keep that 10. Don't want to throw it away. Uh-uh. Don't do that. Now, I have a minus 12. I basically have to undo this thing. And the opposite of subtraction is going to be, you got it, addition. So let's add 12 to both sides. And we've got 2X equaling, it looks like, 22. Last time I checked, that's what 10, 10 times. No, uh -uh. 10 plus. We're plusing here, right? So we got 22. Divide both sides by 2. And our x is equal to 11. That was pretty easy division, wasn't it, at the very end? Now, remember we said we're going to check. So let's do a quick check. 
four times, whew, two times, put an 11 in there, and we're going to subtract three. And notice I've got a parenthesis. That means we go there first. And we, we're going to multiply it before we subtract. All right, so do not, as tempting as it may seem to you, do not take 11 minus 3 first. That's last. Remember my dear Aunt Sally told us so. And on the other side here, we've got 2 times in the parentheses, 3 times 11, and we'll tack on 5 to that. And when we look at where we're going, the whole idea is we've got to get the same amount over here, same amount over there. So let's work out the parentheses first. How about it? We've got 4 times 2 times 11, last time I checked, 22, right? That's what we said it was. And we're going to subtract 3 from that. My goodness, that sounds like a 19 coming our way. I hope it is. And over here we've got 2 times, how about it, 36? No, where did I get 36 from? Jumping the gun there, right? 33 and plus 5. We're going to get 38. Maybe thinking somewhere, I don't know. Anyway, 4 times 19, how about it? That one comes out, I believe, 76. Over here, we also are going to double 38. That's going to give us 76. Goal is accomplished. We have it checked. And we can do that mentally. Some of you guys can do that mentally. I know some of you guys and ladies out there can just whiz those numbers through your heads. But always do some way, a mental or a physical paper check, and make sure that 11 makes this equation true. And it certainly does on this one, all right? And there's your problem of the day. Now, how about it, folks? Let's get those phones ringing. All right, we got those folks from Beard and Key Club waiting to take care of you, talk to you, and send you on in here to me. All right, we'll talk together. And I look forward to it because you guys do make the show rock when you call through. I understand I have a caller waiting on the line. Welcome to Math Line this afternoon. And who might I be talking to? Sammy Fuzzy C. Sammy is back. Good to hear from you, sir. And he's from Knox County, right, Sammy? Yes. All right, so we got it going here. And Sammy, welcome to the show again. He's been with us a couple days this week, and I always appreciate hearing from him. So what kind of problem you got for me today, Sammy? One more minute. Got some paper going over there, I can tell, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. And yesterday, I finally, we finally had a little conversation afterwards. I figured out what you were trying to do. I may, may show that one again to the, the folks here at home today. All right, with that multiplication of fractions you had, a two-fifths times six, I believe it was? Yes. You remember that? Mm-hmm. You want to go back to that one? No. No? Okay. And <laughs> there will all follow show a seven-inch S-E-G-M-E-N-T segment. Is that what that says? Mm-hmm. And it's a seven, did you say, uh-huh, go ahead. Two equal parts, what is the length of one of those parts? Okay, all right, so looks like we're going to, are we doing a multiplication problem again here? Is that what you're trying to give me there? Yes. Okay, all right, so do you have a whole number? There. Do you have a whole number? A number yeah. like a, did I hear you say seven? Did I hear that come out of your mouth there? Yes. And is that what we've got? Are we going to be from zero to seven? Is that the idea? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, you keep telling me yeses, and I'm going to go for it. All right. So we're going to create a little segment. It's going to be from zero out here to seven. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, what are we going to try to divide that into? Or what are we, what's the fraction you're going to attach to the you seven? Into how many? Two equal parts. Two equal parts this time. So I'm not going to have mm -hmm. to do too much dividing them, am I? What? All right. So let's see what we've got going here. In my opinion here, what we've got going is we're looking for two equal parts. Are we looking to make this, we're just looking for two spaces, right? Basically, you fit, said we're cutting up this whole big space into basically two parts, right? Right. Okay. So what happens here? And by the way, this is illustrating my friends out there in, in the area. These, I think you're trying to say, what is one half times seven? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. No. We're on the same wavelength here. And so what we're going to do, we're going to take and we're going to divide this thing in two equal parts. And we're going to see how much is in each one of those. So I, we're, I, I split it right down the middle is the way I look at it here. And Sammy, what we're going to say is, that this 7 can be written as what? 14 over 2. Does that sound good to you? Yes. 
And what we're going to do, we're going to split that 14 in half. We're going to split that 14 in half because that's what we're looking for is one half, right? Mm -hmm. So that is basically going to come back and give us 7 over 2, all right? Because we had 14 halves, and Sammy said we're going to divide these things into even pieces. That means we're going to take half of that 14 and get 7 halves. And you know what? Those of you who like the old-fashioned way of multiplication, if we take 1 half times 7 and put a 1 under it, you know what we're going to get there? We're going to get 1 times 7, which is 7 over 2, which is the same value that I have right here. So far, so good, Sammy? Yes. Now, you know what? Your teacher probably likes those mixed numbers, does she or he? I don't know if you've got a male or female teacher she. there. It's a she. All right. Probably likes those mixed numbers. So what are we going to get? We're going to say how many times will 2 go into 7? And that would give us actually, what, 3 and 1 left over. So how about it? 3 and a half. That sound good? Mm -hmm. And that is how far it is from 0 to, obviously, 3 and a half. And then we get another 3 and a half to get us back to seven. So each of these spaces are three and a half and also that number seven halves becomes three and a half. So that kind of a lot of things going on there. Now yesterday what Sammy was trying to get me to do was break six I believe it was we had into fifths. Was that correct? Yes. That's when we finally figured that out. We talked a little bit last night after the show was over and I enjoyed that conversation. So let me do that real quick for our viewers, okay? Because yesterday I sort of left them thinking, well, I don't know what's going on. And I wasn't, right, I wasn't quite sure what we were trying to do, but now I've got the idea. So Sammy said we're going to do this, and we're going to take 0 to 6, right? Yeah. And you've got the problem, 2 fifths times 6. And I really, really do. I like this approach that you can use on a number line, so to speak. And what we're going to do, we're going to divide this craziness into fifths and then count one, two of those. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at six and we're going to change that to fifths. That's 30 of those. 30 over five. Just another way to rename six, which is a pretty cool option here. And we're going to break this thing down into fifths. So we're going to break down our 30 into six, then add six, then add six, then add six, right? So I'm going to try to break this thing. First of all, let me see if I can get this down into fifths. I think we're going to do pretty good. There we go. So up at the top here, we have zero fifths to start with, but we're going to write six fifths. And then the next one's going to be, what, 12 fifths? Mm -hmm. And then we have 18 fifths. We have 24 fifths. And there we have our 30 fifths. And we're going to say we have two of those because we said two fifths times six. So we broke it up, that six into fifths, and then we say we got two of them, and that puts us right there at 12 over 5. Now, for our viewers who still like to do it the old-fashioned way, if we say two fifths times six over one, my goodness, we get 12 over 5 also. And then that would become, looks like two and two fifths if you're trying to get it to a mixed number, okay? So, Sammy, are we good now? Does that work yeah. for us? Okay. And like I said, that's the number we were looking for last night. And he had a, I, I like that innovative way. Your teacher's done a good job of explaining that to you also, because you were able to help me along with making sure that we had all the moves right. So, sir, thank you for calling in. Have you got anything else you want to ask me while we got you on the line? I get kind of very complicated. I'll try to pick. You want to talk to me later? Them. Okay. I'll call you later. Okay. Thank you, Sammy. It's good to hear from you, all right? Now, folks, it's easy. I, Sammy does it, and we get a lot of good things accomplished there. 844-686-2378, our Bearden High School Key Club members. We got Emily and Jesse out there needing to have something to do. They're giving it their time to come here and help us out this afternoon, and we do appreciate it. Actually, Bearden Key Club does a lot for us. They do a lot of these afternoons, give a lot of their time volunteering to answer phones for us throughout the year. And this week, they've been here every day, so that's great to have them along, and we want to make sure they've gotten a good workout. So that number, 844-686-2378. Looks good, sounds good, and they do a great job. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Now, what I have going on here, you all need to make the show rock right out there. That's the next thing, 844-686-2378. I think I hear a phone ringing. Thank you for whoever's calling there. Keep calling us. Let's go back to a problem of the day for a couple of days ago when we had to figure out 
what kind of triangle we had. Now you're going like, oh my goodness, that was a long time, Ernie. So let me refresh your memories here. We had three points. We connected them and we put a right angle there because we checked slopes, remember slopes. And we found out that, if, if, folks, if they're opposite reciprocals, the slopes on a graph of lines that come together, if they're opposite reciprocals, they're going to be perpendicular, all right? So this one came out to be, go down three blocks over one. So this is our first little slope. And then this one comes in and connects, and it said, wow, go wow. Up three, that's your rise, and run over nine. So we ended up with a one-third. Opposite reciprocals, right? Now, what we're going to do, I've got a caller waiting right now, so what we want to do, I want to show another option, is let's use the distance formula. You say, well, distance formula? What are we going to do? Actually, we're going to kick with it really well here. But what we want to do is figure out how long this side is, how long this side is, and then, you, then use Pythagorean theorem, a squared, b squared, and c squared and see if we can't get a right triangle out of those two. And we'll see if we got enough time for that with the show, but first of all, I do have a caller waiting in the wings, so welcome to MathLine. Who am I talking with? Sammy Felici. Oh, Sammy, you're back. Boy, you yep, quick. I thought you were going to wait till after the show. How are you doing again? Good. <laughs> all right, what you got for me? What's your new problem? What is the right kick of one half times Two thirds. Okay, so we're going to do one half of two thirds, right? Mm -hmm. So he said product, so we are going to take one half times two thirds. Now, do we want a number line for this one also? Number line. Number line. You're going to insist on those number lines. That's great. So what we're going to do, we're going to start out with that zero. That zero helps us out a lot, my friends, because then mm -hmm. we're not trying to stagger it between, uh, you know, some strange values. We're looking for two thirds. So two-thirds is out here somewhere, all right? And that line just keeps going on and on and on, but we are only going to worry about the two-thirds part, right? Right. So we we're going to... One and two again. Okay. So basically, we're going to we're going to break this thing in halves, aren't we? We're going to split it because you're saying we want to use these twos, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So let's take a look at it. That's going to be... I'm going to go for splitting it right there. So I have, mm -hmm. Sammy, I have zero thirds here, and I have two thirds here. So what's in the middle? It's easy, isn't it? Zero, and then what's the next number after zero? We'll go to one, and then we're at two, right? Uh -huh. So there's one third. That pops out pretty quick. What that's mm -hmm. telling me, though, is we have a one third distance here and a one third distance here. You're mm -hmm. going basically traveling from zero to the first point because you're only asking for the first half, right? That's what mm -hmm. this one half is, folks. That's what we're talking about. A little bit of new math out there. Some of you are like, whoa. <laughs> um, so as we look at it here, that's a, it's, it's a neat little option, neat, neat little way to get to it. Your value also is going to be one-third right there. Now, again, those who like the old-fashioned way, here we go, where we multiply numerators together and denominators together. And by the way, it's just as legit as these are. 6 is going to be 2, and it's 2 over 6. Ah, simplifies down to 1 third. Also, you could have canceled those 2s and still gotten to 1 third. So we got the value here. That's where we're looking for. How far is this 1 half over? And that's what we get is that 1 third, and that's the answer to your problem. Sammy, does that sound good to you? Yes. I bet you can do any of these now, can't you? Mm -hmm. You can split these things apart and change them right and left and all that. That's a neat little method. Hey, um, and again, you got one more for me before we lose you and say you'll come back at the end of the show? One moment, it's Oni. Okay, I got one moment for you. This is going to be the Ernie and Sammy show today. And it's more of the Sammy show than Ernie show right now, I think. <laughs> you getting there? Yes. Well, Mama, okay. <laughs> Folks, go ahead and give us some calls while we're waiting for Sammy to get his uh, find his stuff there that he's wanting to give to me here. 844-686-2378. Enjoying your math line day, I hope, today. I am. 
and uh, get us called because we're going to be gone after a while for about oh, one, three days, right? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We don't have call in, but we'll be back on Monday for a live call in. Speaking of which, while he's looking for those things, specialized segments tomorrow. We are going to look at box plots, sometimes called box and whisker plots. So you don't want to miss out on that. And uh, talk about the five number summary, medians, quartiles, goodness sakes, all sorts of little statistical details that are based all about the median. All right, so don't want to miss out on that show tomorrow. And uh, who knows next week what will happen, but we know we'll be live again. I know some of you folks are on spring break this week. Some of you are on spring break next week. Believe it or not, it's already March, isn't it? And a lot of you are going to be off the next week. We're going to still have live shows for the most part. We may have a day or two where we, we weasel out a little bit on you there. But uh, just keep watching us. We are going to be live next week as we plan to be pretty much throughout the duration. And again, we always appreciate when you watch, but we also appreciate it when you give us a call. And Sammy, have you got, have we lost Sammy? No. No. Okay. Sammy, what you got? You got it for me here? One more problem? Yes. Okay, so first of all, it sounds like we're just taking any number, any fraction, not, less not than one, number. right? Root. Less than, greater than, than, equal to. Oh, so we get a choice here. Yes, more choices. Okay. Um, from, the, from in a part of the number, from more than the whole of the number, Sammy, I want to tell you something on this mm -hmm. one. Would you do this for me? Maybe your mom or grandmom can help you on this. If you could send me a picture of that one, because there's a you got you got a lot of words going on in there, and I'm I can't I, I, it would be great to see that. And they can email that to us, okay? Or they can uh, I get yeah you can send it to us. You can't send it to us on our, our phone because these aren't cell phones that we are, we do your call in on. But uh, if that would work or something, because that would be able to see that a lot easier, okay? Can you do that for us? Yes, I'll text you. Okay, that'll be good, all right? That'll work. You can text us, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll work on that, or you can give me a call at the end of the show, okay, after the show's over, and we'll see how we can get that in there, because I'm interested to hear what you're asking, okay? And there's just a lot of stuff going on there, and I'm not quite sure where we are, okay? So if you can give me that, that'd be great. How's that? Will that work? Okay. All right. Hey, thanks for calling us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, got to think of, we got a hey math line waiting for us in the wings, guys. So let's take a look at that. Hey, math line. I am Ben from eighth grade in Florida. Could you give me an example to show that subtraction and division are not commutative operations? Ooh, Ben, thank you. From Florida. Then once again, this is one of our Ripley experiences there at the Ripley's Aquarium up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and says, could you give an example to show that subtraction and division are not commutative operations? Whoa. Now, that's interesting. First of all, I guess we need to know what's commutative mean. Because some of us go like, well, that's an interesting word. So let's take a look at this. We got a couple of minutes here to finish off the show. So let's take care of that. We'll bring it down just a little bit here. First of all, commutative means if we take, for example, a plus B, and we switch the order. We commute them, if you will. Now, it's not communicable. It's not like a disease, although some people think it may be. <laughs> but it's commutative here. This is good, because no matter what I pick for A and B, I get A plus B is going to equal B plus A. It also works very well for multiplication. A times B is always going to be equal to B times A. And some of you are saying, oh, wait a minute, I thought that meant those, that makes a two-digit number. No, no, that is A times B and B times A. All right, so it's multiplication. That always works. But let's check something out. What happens if we put A minus B equaling to B minus A? And just using an example, let's use two different numbers. How about let A equal 6 and B equal to 4? 
and let's stick it in there. We got 6 minus 4 equals 4 minus 6. Uh-oh, we've got a difference in order, don't we? This one is going to be 2. This is going to be negative 2, not equal. So there's the problem there. Now, division is even easier to figure out. Let's say we have A over B, which is what division is, by the way, folks. And we've got B over A. Use the same two digits there, okay? Got 6 over 4 equaling to 4 over 6. I think you can tell, obviously, that is not going to give us the same thing. So that does not work. So that, my friends, that's an example of why subtraction and division are not commutative. And if it doesn't work for all possibilities, guess what? We're in trouble. And even worse, if you try to put a zero in for A or B, you've got a real problem there because you can't divide by zero. So anyhow, that's our show there for the math line here. That's the show for the week. We will get that little distance problem fixed for you all for next week. How about it? Been a great time to spend with Sammy today and hope the rest of y'all have had a good time watching us. Specialized segments tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. Box plots. And we will see you again live next week.